everybody, Corey at Gemini like Guitar, and we are back for Stoner Rock. So in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at how to make our riffs flow, and we're gonna be honing in on the sixth and the fifth string. So what we'll do first is take a look at the scale fragments that we need to get to grips with these riffs. And there's gonna be four ideas, and each of them is going to build upon the previous one. So to start with, we will begin in the open position. We're gonna have the E, the G, the A, and the B. The next position will be the second position and we'll have G, A, B, D. Next we'll move into the fifth position and we'll have A, B, D, E. Then we'll be in the seventh position and we'll have B, D, E, G. Moving forward, 10th position, D, E, G, A. Back to the octave at fret 12, E, G, A, B. And there are a couple more that some of the notes that we'll use, but basically they're just the lower positions put 12 frets higher. Okay, so what our aim here is to do is to get from one end of the guitar to the other, either by advancing from the lowest to the highest, or sometimes by going in reverse from the highest to the lowest and using those notes on the two strings that we have at our disposal. So the first idea is reasonably straightforward, apart from the fact that you have to shift around a lot. So if you need to, what I tend to do, with this sort of thing is I will look down a little bit just to make sure I'm in the right spot. Uh, basically what you want to do is you can start with the, obviously the open string. Once we do that, we can use the index finger. Now you can move up with that finger quite a bit, or you can just pick and choose your combination that you find uh, works best for you. So to start with, we will be working from the open string all the way up to fret 19, I believe. Yep and then we'll be working our way back. So I'm gonna play this through once and it will be at 60 beats per minute. And then you can use the sound slice uh, media controls to loop it if you would like. And remember that you can loop uh, the smallest portion you want or something bigger, it's up to you. You just uh, do what you need to, to make it digestible for you. Okay, so in the next example, we're going to be introducing the fifth string. So the thing to be aware of here is, is that now, at this point, we're gonna start making use of those scale fragments like we did on both strings. So for example, when we do example B to start out with, we'll be using our second position notes. And then when we move up a bit, we're gonna be in the fifth position after which we will move into the 10th position. And after that, then we'll be moving into the 10th position. We'll be spending a little bit of time there and then we'll be finishing moving up to the 12th position like we did before. And then we're gonna do a slide into the 17th. Factor 14, 17 and 15 on the fifth and sixth strings respectively. Well, let's have a play through this twice at 60 BPM. And remember, you can loop as much or as little as you'd like to.
Okay, so we're on to example C. So in this example, we're gonna spend some time per bar in each position by the looks of things as I'm looking down the page there. So for example, when we do the first part, And that was our scale fragments from the second position. When we move into the next bar, we're going to start off at the third fret and we're going to stay there, but we've got to stretch out a bit. So it's kind of like a combo between this position and then what we did in the fifth position. And then moving up to the fifth position is pretty straightforward because it's parallel notes. And a lot of these are parallel as occasionally where they're not. Uh, we've got the fifth and the seventh fret and then finally then the seventh and the tenth fret. So let's do a playthrough of section C and we're going to play that through twice. Finally then we have example D and for this one what I decided to do was to work in reverse. Now bear in mind the other examples you could actually do that where you played um, from backwards say from bar four to bar one and experiment with that and as always you want to do as much experimentation with these concepts as you can incorporating them into your own ideas and improvisations and thereby really ingraining them in your uh, musical fuel tank if you like so that you're able to pull them out when needed uh, in those times when you want to be creative. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start in the 12th position and we're just going to play backwards through the fragment. So if we look at the first bar of example D, that fragment is just being played straight backwards. So there's no gaps or anything, each note of the scale. And the same goes for the rest of the bar. So we end up in the 10th position and then we end up in the seventh position. And then we just continue down. Uh, the rhythm does change in the second bar though. So when we do that part, Got a bit where we do four lots of the 16th notes. So the last two beats are all filled out with an even um, section of notes there. What we're gonna do in the second half is we're actually gonna go, and I didn't remember this until now, but we're gonna go actually ascending. So we start in the open position. And we've also got a bit at the end where we do a little bit of a tiny bit of a flurry. So it just means we're gonna pick a note, hammer very quickly to the 12th fret and go back to the 10th fret. So you want to make sure that flurry is nice and sharp and clean rhythmically. Let's have a playthrough of section D now and you can practice along with that, remembering that you can loop as much or as little as you would like. Okay, so that wraps things up. Practice well, enjoy it, and use the drum track to come up with your own ideas. And remember that you don't have to play as uh, what I would describe as like in, a, in as a linear as fashion. It just means from one point to another, you can essentially just mix and match. And that means that you don't always have to play in order of the scale. You don't always have to start on the root note. There's an infinite amount of variations you could do with these things, but it takes time and practice and just uh, relaxing and letting the, the knowledge sort of gradually come into you in order to uh, make the best use of these options. So have fun and I'll see you soon for the next lesson. Until then, bye for now.